Hello, racing enthusiasts. Now, racing car driver, I am not. In fact, I barely qualify for the status of driver of racing cars. And yet, when the opportunity presents to have a steer, you simply cannot say no. It's actually illegal. So, it was with thanks to the legendary Andrew Young of the even more legendary SBR, that's Stooge Brothers Racing, not Stone, I was offered a seat in an Excel, the best racing cars in Australia, for a track day at the mighty Malala Motorsport Park. So, welcome to my day, pretending to drive. As they say in the classics, Make sure to side. I've now got all the gear. Absolutely no idea. Prophetic words. before session one, meaning a wet and slippery track as I tried to remember how to drive after 12 months out of the seat. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. No, that's not a fire suit. I don't own one, and they're not mandatory for these practice days. Should I wear one? Absolutely, and I'll have one for next time out. So please don't fill the comments section with comparisons to Romain Grosjean. Fire is always a risk, but to be fair, a modified road-going Excel is much less flammable than a Formula One car going through a guardrail. Anyway, back to the slip sliding away. Loads of fun, and if you don't spin, you're not trying hard enough. Though the unfortunate soul in the Monaro didn't need a corner to find the limits of grip. Fortunately, he escaped serious damage. Before the second run, it rained hard. While waiting, I rather poorly tried to make excuses, I mean explain, the challenges of running with other cars not quite so fleet of foot as the Nimble XL. This is fun. The challenge of these mixed groups is that these other cars are so much faster in a straight line, but the big V8 things, especially in these changeable conditions, they're, um, it's actually really challenging because you're miles better than under brakes and through the mid corner. And then you just get, uh, you get absolutely stuffed. Because in these conditions, they can't put their power down and you saw that Monaro having off earlier. The rain got worse. Meanwhile, the subtitles battled to comprehend my external, internal monologue. <laughs> We're awfully raining now. I've just noticed this is the same steering wheel that I had on my Porsche when I bought it. Where are you going? Once again, the low grip allowed the mighty Excel to show how good it was against theoretically faster machines. In answer to the question, how slippery was it? Watch this. I'm like a fat Colin McRae. Fun session. The only real dramas happened as I got to pit lane. It was mercifully dry for the third session, which meant it was time to turn up the pace. Though even in the dry, traffic was a problem. And this race car driver excuses book is great. Where I should have been in the second session. Felt really good. 
keep it on the brakes for turn seven. I'm struggling to get the car in there. I think I'm turning in too early. But uh, that felt really good. Oh, I'm stoked with that. That was where I would have liked to have started the day. But, uh, Run four, and finally things came together. With no traffic, much better track conditions, and more concentration than I've probably ever managed to maintain for an extended period outside of calling the Bathurst 12 hour, I had the best 10 minutes or so I've ever had in a race car. Five consecutive laps within four tenths or so, and when you take into account the 1.5 to two seconds off the track was, all of them well under my PB effort. I've also learned that if you speed up a Hyundai XL 400%, they sound like a mid-2000s Formula One car at speed. Have a listen to this. I'd struggled with the 3-4 gear shift throughout the day, and if you weren't accurate, it was easy to miss the gear. On the fifth good lap of my run, I did just that. Didn't lose much time, not happy though. A lap later I had this moment, at turn two, and that brought an end to my run. I should have been really happy, but at the end of the session, I wasn't. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Actually, I was very pleased, just out of breath. I had big plans for the final run of the day, but weirdly, my mind was going elsewhere. When I get home, I'm going to have shower beers. Shower beers are great. Very sweaty. Too much info, mate. Now, before the session, I convinced myself I was being a massive wuss at turn one. So this time out, I decided to see what happened I took a dose of HTFU and fully sent it. As you can see in the replay, I got it all wrong. I didn't get enough weight over the front wheels to help the turn in. The rear unloaded and around I went. Good spin though. Anyway, once I recovered from that, I put my head down and tried to focus on everything I'd learned throughout the day. And on the final lap, it all came together.
the last lap of the day. Now, this might sound like I'm reading from that race car driver book of excuses again, but proper drivers, who race excels all the time, told me their laps were about 1.5 seconds off their usual efforts, on account probably of the 80k an hour winds that have an enormous effect on a car with less than 80 kilowatts. Anyway, this means my 3102 should be more like a high 129 in ideal conditions, which is exactly where I wanted to be. Although I didn't show it at the time, I was very pleased. Debrief. I went exactly as fast as I did before, but much less consistent. I'm not disappointed with that. I felt like I drove better, but less consistently. Ultimately, I think the lap time is there to find. So, there you go. Let's watch that spin again, that was freaking cool. So there you go. Perhaps there is hope for me yet, despite my fists made of ham. A massive thanks to Andrew, Asher and Susan for making the day happen. And don't forget to subscribe to the Race Talk TV.